Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Lebrick. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdul Latif and Rashid Zayani, responded to the question submitted by the Chairman of the Foreign Affairs, Defense and National Security Committee of the Representatives Council, Representative Mohammed Ibrahim al Sisi Al Buainin, on the extent to which Qatar responded to the invitation sent by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs to its Qatari counterpart regarding sending a Qatari delegation to begin bilateral talks between the two sides on issues between the two countries and implementation of Al Ula statement for the interests of the citizens of the two brothers the countries and to promote joint Gulf action. The Minister of Foreign Affairs stated that after the issuance of Al-Ula statement, the Qatari authorities had not made any attempt towards resolving the pending issues with Bahrain or in response to direct negotiations over these issues. He stressed that Qatar needs to deal with the requirements of Gulf consensus, taking into account Bahrain's strategic interests and expediting addressing the pending issues between the two countries in a manner that ensures sound and positive relations between the two countries in the future. The minister affirmed that Bahrain, under the leadership of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, is a country of long standing institutions and traditions. That the kingdom welcomed the issuance of Al Ula statement as it represents a new stage for regional stability, and that Bahrain has shown good intentions as a prelude to eliminate the damage it has suffered over recent decades as a result of Qatari policies. As Ayani noted, that Qatar has not taken any clear measures regarding the activation of the provisions of Al Ula statement with regard to the claims of Bahrain. In this context, it should be noted that Bahrain, which takes pride in heading the current session of the GCC, is looking forward to a new path in relations with Qatar that takes into account the rights and interests of all states so that relations are more balanced and stable. Dr. Zayani stressed that Bahrain commits to agreements and covenants, including Al Ula statement, in addition to the aforementioned letter. The Civil Aviation Affairs announced the continuation of flights between the two countries, which was preceded by the call of the cabinet for direct bilateral negotiations with Qatar to reach an agreement regarding the continuity of permitting fishermen in both countries to practice their activities as is customary. In implementation of the directives of His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa to launch the second version of the National Employment Programme, the Labour Fund Tim Keen announced the resumption of all its various programmes that provide to individuals and institutions. The Chairman of the Board of Directors of the Labour Fund Tim Keen, Sheikh Mohammed bin Isa Al Khalifa, stated that the resumption of the programmes comes in line with the government's aspirations for the next phase with the aim of encouraging the employment of national cadres, including recent graduates, by enhancing competitiveness in the labor market and focusing on the development of national cadres in accordance uh, to the new market requirements. Sheikh Mohammed noted that Temkin has allocated a budget of 120 million dinars for three years from 2021 until 2023 to support the employment of Bahrainis, which is double what has been allocated during the past five years. In a press conference held for this occasion, the Minister of Labor and Social Development Chairman of the Board of Directors of the Labor Market Regulatory Authority Jamil bin Muhammad Ali Hamidan discussed the role that the ministry and the authority will play in implementing the initiatives in cooperation with the relevant authorities, foremost of which is the Labor Fund Temkin. Hamidan explained that the Labor Market Regulatory Authority will start implementing the second initiative by extending the period for announcing vaccines and vacancies sorry, in the Kingdom of Bahrain from two weeks, as is currently applied to three weeks, before permitting for applying for a recruitment from a abroad in order to encourage employers to benefit from the program, increase the period of marketing for jobs and give employers better opportunities to select the suitable national competencies. It is scheduled to receive applications for the Enterprise Support Program next February. Foreign Ministry Under Secretary for International Affairs Dr. Sheikh Abdullah bin Ahmed Al Khalifa participated on behalf of the Minister of Foreign Affairs Dr. Abdul Latif bin Rashid Al Zayani at the 17th Asia Cooperation Dialogue Virtual Ministerial Meeting hosted by the Republic of Turkey under the theme of New Normal Safe and Healthy Tourism. During the meeting, Dr. Sheikh Abdullah affirmed in his speech that the Kingdom of Bahrain, as a founding member of the ACD, adheres to the objectives of the dialogue and the foundations and principles 
on which it is based. He indicated the importance of strengthening cooperation among member states in establishing partnerships in major cooperation fields such as food and water security, energy and communication, technology and innovation, as well as cooperation in the fight against terrorism. He called for the importance of identifying the available opportunities in order to be able to create an interactive, diverse and integrated Asian society and to broaden the horizons of understanding between different cultures, noting that Bahrain, led by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, has succeeded in establishing an ideal global model of tolerance and civilized coexistence. The Ministry of Health said today that the number of active coronavirus cases reached 2,918 with 354 recoveries, 305 registered new cases. 137 of the new registered cases are expatriates, 158 are contacts of active cases and 10 are travel related. The Ministry urges everyone to comply with the guidelines issued by the National Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus.